You're using the wrong tool on the job. Have you ever been on the job and not had exactly what you need? So you're like, well, I'm just gonna use something a little different here. Well, there's a problem with that. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna talk about some tools that have been used in the wrong situation and show you the right tool. Let's just jump in here and check this out. So as I reach into the magic drawer, I grab my safety glasses. But here's the problem. If I'm grinding, if I'm cutting, if I'm working up under a sink where dust particles can move around, any metal scrap metal can be thrown around, I may want more than this. Instead of goggles, I'm gonna mono goggle. Here's what I love about this. This actually protects my eyes, it seals off around my eyes, and it gives me the added protection of a full-blown face shield. This, to me, is probably one of the smartest pieces of safety equipment you can use. A pipe wrench is a tool that is used to grip and turn pipes and fittings, but it's often used as a hammer or a lever. So let's take a look at it. Uh, look, I love these. I'm a plumber, we use them all the time. But too many times, I've seen them used as a hammer. Again, as a lever. They'll put this in to try to pry something over or whatever. If you've got a good pin wrench with you, you can put it in and use this to move things around. These are a great thing to have on your truck. But the truth is, when you need a hammer, damage. you need a hammer, okay? Get the right tool, use the right tool. Too many times, I've seen people use the wrong tool and it slips off, they hit the finger, they break it, they bust a fingernail, something like that. Use the right tool even if it is a little loose. Now, a notebook and pencil, this is something I talk about using all the time on the job. A notebook and pencil are tools used to track time and materials for jobs, but this is becoming a thing of the past. My favorite tool for these things is Jobber. Now this video is sponsored by Jobber, but I really want you to know that Jobber can help your home service business run smoothly for you and your customers with online booking, lead management, quoting tools, automated follow-ups, job forms, time and expense tracking. You can lose the paper and pencil for digital leads. With the app, you have a portal to the work in your pocket or hanging on your hip. If you wanna start saving time in your week, then check out go.getjobber.com slash Roger Wakefield, where you can get a 14 day free trial and 20% off your first six months. That's why you wanna use it, it's the right tool. Now, as I reach into the magic drawer, I gotta tell you, adjustable pliers are not good hammers. I repeat, Adjustable pliers are not good hammers. Guys, this is one way to quickly mess up your adjustable pliers. The handles will bend, and if they're on the cheap side, you could break the jaws completely off. I've seen it before. Adjustable pliers are a versatile tool that can be used to grip and turn pipes, fittings, and valves. But they are not designed to be used as a cutting tool. Using them to cut wire or other materials can dull the jaws and make them less effective for gripping. Use the right tool. Don't use this to cut what this is made to cut. So Teflon tape is often used to seal pipe threads and prevent leaks, but it should be used sparingly and not wrapped too tightly. Wrapping too much tape can cause it to bunch up and create a bigger leak. So let's take a look at it. Literally, put it on, you wanna pull it, but you don't wanna pull it super tight. Get a good wrap around on it till it overlays itself, and then however many wraps you need. Now to be honest, when you're using a good thick tape like this, three or four wraps is perfect. You notice I didn't pull it too tight where I thinned out the tape either. Now, what's the wrong way to do it? You know, you've seen those guys, they put it on, and I don't know, maybe they get busy talking. Maybe they talk a lot. Maybe they just keep talking. And, you know, they don't know when to stop talking and they just keep on going. Now, let me tell you what. This is a little too much. Okay, okay, all right, okay, all right. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's, it's enough slices! And then I remember, oh yeah, I'm done. 
It's not the way to do it. That is. Use the right tool, but use it the right way. All right, so I'm gonna reach into the magic drawer. Where did that come from? I tell you what, I've gone on a lot of soft stoppages that I thought a closet auger was the tool I needed. And I've pushed it through many, many times trying to get things to loosen up and it never would. Then I pulled out a plunger and in a matter of just seconds, I had the entire clog undone. So there's a lot of different tools for unstopping a toilet. Number one, make sure you use the right plunger. Sometimes the closet auger is it. So figuring out what you need and using it the right way is fantastic. Plungers are designed to clear blockages in drains and toilets, but they're not meant to be used as a tool to remove large objects or debris. Using a plunger to forcibly try to remove large objects could damage the piper fixture. You could actually have a large object in there and the plunger's gonna push it further in. So be careful, but make sure you're using the right thing. Now, drain snakes are used to clear blockages in drain pipes, but they're not meant to be forced through pipes or used to remove large objects. Doing so can damage the pipes or the snake itself. So a little drain snake like this is phenomenal when you've got a bathtub, you're going in through the overflow, or you're going in through a lavatory top, through a P-trap, through a, a sink drain, anything like that. Once you really open that P-trap up and you're running into the wall, this may be okay, but at that point, you probably want to go with a sewer machine. So pipe cutters are designed to cut copper pipes, but they're not really suitable for cutting other materials such as plastic pipes, PVC pipes, or cast iron pipes. Using the wrong type of cutter can lead to a poor cut or even breaking the cutter or the cutter blade. Now, I've used large cutters like this, but we had a special blade to cut PVC pipe, C PVC pipe, and things like that. Using blades like this, using cutters like this, are great for PEX, poly, anything like that that's a little bit smaller and flexible. Having the right cutters with you when you need it is phenomenal. And of course, you would never use anything like this for cast iron pipe. You would want to use cast iron cutters or maybe even a sawzall with a cast iron blade. One that's gonna cut through it and cut it nice and straight. One thing you wanna make sure when you use these is line it up and keep the cut straight. That's what's great about these on copper tubing. You always get a good clean cut. Just remember to ream it and get it ready to go back together. Again, use the right tool for the job. And if you love this, probably wanna check out that video.